Hi, my name is Debbie Borkvitz, and I am one of a group of people making videos, commenting on some videos from the Khan Academy. The video I've chosen is called Numerator and Denominator of Fractions. And in this video, we focus on the fraction 3 fourths. We learn that 3 is the numerator, 4 is the denominator. And we look at this fraction represented as a square pi and then as a round pi. So clearly a video of modest ambition. However, I've chosen it for my commentary because I think that fractions are really, really difficult to teach and actually deceptively difficult to teach. And this is the very first video in the Khan Academy sequence of fractions. And it actually brings up some of the issues about why fractions are so hard to teach. And I actually think there are some mistakes in this video pedagogical mistakes that uh, are not too difficult to correct. So I intend my video to be constructive and let's get to the Khan Academy video. I will stop or talk over when I have something to say. Okay, I'm going to start stop right away and say we're asked. Who's asking us? Kind of sounds like him to me. Okay, I want to pause here and note that he used the language three-fourths once, and all the other times he said three over four. Now, the problem with the language three over four is it makes it sound like we're dealing with two numbers, three and four, which are two very familiar numbers. Now, this video is the first in the sequence where we're introducing fractions. Later on in people's education on fractions and ratios and such, sometimes we will be dealing with two numbers. You might have, I don't know, three cups of flour and four cups of milk or something like that where the numbers are separate. But when we're first introducing fractions, like we're doing in this video, we're introducing them to fill in the gaps because the whole numbers aren't enough anymore. So even very young children know that if we have three brownies and we're sharing them with four people, the answer is not that each kid gets zero brownies and there's three left over. That is just not how it works. And we know that when we measure things, sometimes we need those little lines in between the whole numbers. So fractions are really our first attempt to start filling in the gap. Later, students will learn about square roots and pi and other things on the number line besides fractions. But right now, one of the real tasks is to see three-fourths as a number and to make sense of it as a number. That is one number, not two numbers. Now, um, clearly part of the goal is to help, help kids make sense of the number, three-fourths. But we don't want to undermine that goal by having kids think, oh, it's a three and a little segment and then a four. Now, in about 10 or 15 videos, we'll start doing operations on fractions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. And if kids aren't making sense of th what 3 fourths means as a number, then these operations really aren't going to make that much sense. And they become a whole bunch of things to memorize uh, about four numbers, actually, two, num two numerators and two denominators. Um, I personally think that operations on fractions are usually introduced too early in the curriculum because if students have a really, really strong sense of what, what fractions mean as numbers, how, how big they are, make just making sense of them, then the operations are a lot, a lot easier and make more sense. Okay, but let's go back to the video. Okay. Um, well, I think I've already proven that I know which is which, but what I want to point out here is that top and bottom do not have mathematical meaning here. They're just the convention of how we happen to write fractions. Fractions have been written in a variety of ways, and of course, kids, kids need to learn how, how they're done in their time and culture. But, um, 
But we're not really saying anything mathematically meaningful by saying which is the numerator and which is the denominator. Okay, I'm going to stop again. Once again, I don't know who they is, but in any case, the, the names numerator and denominator actually do have some mathematical significance, and it's worth looking at because looking at wh what, um, what these names mean can get at our goal of un making sense of three-fourths and other fractions as numbers. So what I do in my class for... Um, my math class for people who are planning to be elementary school teachers is I just ask this question what words do you know that sound like denominator or like numerator now it's a video so you can pause and have as much wait time as you want to think about that or maybe look it up um, numerator is is kind of the easy one it sounds like number and a whole lot of other words like numerate numeration that also sound like number Denominator is a little trickier, but what people usually come up with is the word denomination. And so then we talk about, well, where have you heard the word denomination before? People have heard it in terms of money. $5 bill and a $1 bill are different denominations. They've heard it in terms of religion. Sunni and Shiite are different denominations of Islam. These churches pictured here are probably different denominations of Christianity. So denomination kind of tells us the type of thing. You know, it tells us a type. And looking a little deeper, this is um, from a very wonderful etymological dictionary, very helpful tool for a math teacher to have. And I've, I've excerpted some definitions here. And denominator, the root comes from the word to name. So just like we talked about type, Denominator names the type of thing we're dealing with. Um, when we talk about three-fourths, fourths are what we're dealing with. Not three monkeys, not three banana splits, but three-fourths. And numerator, um, it's kind of like numberer. It's the thing that numbers or counts. Um, so with my class, sometimes moving along a number line, we pick some denominators and we actually count out loud uh, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, just to kind of emphasize that role of the numerator, that that's, that's the one that's the number that we're counting. All right, let's go back to the video. Okay, I want to just stop and say three out of four pieces of a pie. Uh, there are some very good videos um, from IMAP out of San Diego State. And in one of them, they show a child who, who is really confused at this language out of. Okay, because out of sounds kind of like take out of. So you could see that the fraction three-fourths is as a pie where you take, you take away three pieces and then that student would have been confused and thought that that value was one-fourth. Just goes to show how very, very tricky it is to teach fractions and how many places there are to get confused with the language. I do like squares. They're easier to draw or non-square rectangles. Although I do want to say that I, I don't know how many kids will have seen a square pie. So you might, you might want to actually use a brownie or something that actually is square. Okay, I just want to stop. He said out of four p 
possible ones, four possible pieces. Now, one of the problems with this is you could never, you could never eat five out of four possible pieces of a pie. So um, when we start adding fractions in 15 videos or so, we are going to get fractions greater than one. So you want to be mindful of whether, whether your representation can work or how it would work with a fraction greater than one. Okay, let's stop for a second and look at uh, a way that you could do this. Still square pie or brownie or whatever, but just a little bit different. Oh, I'm sorry. I have another thing to think about first before we do that. Um, so here's another question you can pause and think about. Let's say Sal ate half a pie and Debbie ate three-fourths of a pie. Who ate more? Well, Sal did, because he ate one half of this really big apple pie, and I ate three quarters of this this mini pumpkin pie. Did I three quarters? I'm not sure what I just said. Okay, so one of the real keys in getting a sense of fractions when you're using a model is that we need to we need to tag our fractions to the number line okay we need to say what is the unit okay because otherwise it's looking like our unit is four pieces of pie there's there's nowhere in there um, when he's saying we're taking three out of four pieces we're also taking three-fourths of one pie and since we want kids to see three-fourths as one number that is a number relative to one. So this is something I have learned from my colleagues in math education, that this is called unitizing. It is really, really critical. Um, it looks different in more advanced problems, but right now at the beginning, we want to just be really clear, what is the unit? And with my pre-service elementary teachers, I just try to hammer in that point. Every problem that you want to draw a picture for, what is the unit? Because when you draw a number line, you need to know where one goes on that number line. If it's just a positive number line, once you have your zero, you set one, and then you've got the whole number line. Here we set our unit. We've got everything. Our unit is one pi or brownie or whatever we're using. Now when we separate it into four equal pieces, each piece of pi is one-fourth of a pi. So this is, this is our really important helping kids make sense of three-fourths as one number. We need, to, we need to see that these pieces are fourths. And then we can count them. Now we've got one-fourth. Now we've got two-fourths. Now we've got three-fourths. Okay, let's go back to the video and see the round pie. And now he's at least saying three fourths. They would eat three of the four pieces. They would eat three of the four. So this is one piece, this is two pieces, and this is. So this, this numbering, I would prefer to see that as saying that each piece is one fourth and maybe numbering one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Again, to help with the understanding of how three-fourths makes sense as a number. Three pieces. So you can imagine the four, the denominator represents the total number of pieces in the pie, and then the three represents how many of those we ate. Okay. So I think what's really most missing is just saying that the pie is one unit and helping kids make sense of why the unit is important. So that's my commentary on this first video from the Khan Academy. Again, I want to say the reason I think this topic is so important is that 
Fractions is just one of those critical places in mathematic education where we lose a lot of kids. And um, I hope I've given some ideas here on how we might do this video differently. Thanks for watching.